Why were reformers like Luther and Calvin so opposed to the Anabaptist? Was it because most of them chose to embrace state religion? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting though, that the early days of the Reformation, um, people are throwing open all these possibilities. And, uh, you know, in Zurich, Zwingli, Zwingli inspired the first Anabaptist. They, they were his disciples. And it seems like what it came down to over and over again, whether it was the baptism, it frankly was the baptism question. Should we move from infant baptism to adult baptism, uh, believer's baptism, as the Anabaptists are saying? And the problem in that day and age was, if you did that, you weren't just talking about a religious uh, ritual. You were talking about denying the way citizens were made in a particular national or city locale. Because in that day of age, when you were baptized as a baby, you weren't just baptized into the you know, kingdom of God as a baby. You were baptized as a citizen in that city or nation or whatever. And so to say, we're not going to do that with our kids anymore, it was basically to say, we're not going to make our, let our kids be citizens. And all of a sudden, you have the threat of anarchy on your hands, complete political anarchy. And this caused Luther and others to go, wait a minute, we, we can't let anarchy happen here. Uh, which is why when things like the Peasants' Revolt happened, Luther came down very strongly against that. Uh, anarchy, you know. And so uh, maintaining the civil order uh, sort of became a very important point for a lot of the reformers. The Anabaptists simply said, if it comes down to following the gospel or trying to maintain the, civ the, the civil order as we know it, sorry, we have to, have to follow the gospel. That's how I yeah. see it. Uh, it. It's all, you see, the, the reformers still operated with a Christendom mindset. And they still, they fused together. They just assumed that um, the church and the state work together. That's the Christendom. And uh, it's by, by that fusion that you're going to conquer the world for Jesus, right? Conquer the world for truth. And they just had, uh, they, they just had a different variation on it than the Catholics had. Uh, it's interesting that the Calvin and Luther and Zwingli, they all, b before they got into power, they were all going, you know, tolerance, you, we ought to, you know, you shouldn't be telling the Catholics, you shouldn't be persecuting people who disagree. As soon as they get into power, they turn around and persecute everyone who disagrees. Because now they have got the power of the sword. You know, they all do their little kind of Constantinian shift. You know, the church got all this power in the 4th and 5th century, turns around, starts persecuting the non-Christians. And so that's going on for a thousand years. Then the Reformation comes, and they're all saying, oh, you shouldn't, you know, Jesus wouldn't want this kind of killing. But as soon as they get into power, boom, they inherit the sword once again and turn around to do the same thing over and over again. Um, the only ones who wouldn't participate in that were the, the Anabaptists. And for all the reasons Paul said, uh, the Christendom has never, well, it's not just Christendom's fault. It's uh, reigning authorities have never liked dissenters. You know, people who threaten, threaten their power, who threaten their rightness, who threaten you know, their sovereignty, uh, who threaten their wealth. These are the enemies and the mindset of the world going back to square one, whether it's part of Christianity or not, the mindset of the world's always been you win when you crush the opposition. And if you have that mindset, then you can do it in the name of Zeus, or you can do it in the name of, of uh, the Bolshevik Revolution, or you can do it in the name of the Tsar, you can do it, or you can do it in Jesus' name. It doesn't matter. You're still just you're crushing to win. And so everyone's been doing that, crushing to win, uh, until some small groups of people said, wait a minute, that doesn't, I don't think Jesus called us to crush to win. One more variation on that theme. No, he called us, if anything, to be willing to be crushed. Um, and that's how you win. A totally different way of winning and of fighting. <laughs>